Hello all and welcome back to another wonderful video. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different on species in depth. Normally I talk directly to the you know creator of the species and everything like that and they give me the information directly in a DM or something like that and normally they'll bring me in their discord server and everything like that and we can kind of talk a little bit there and uh, I can kind of look at the lore and everything that they've set up on their discord server but today we're going to do something a little bit different. Today I'm actually bringing on the creator of the Giplinus which is the species we're going to be discussing today and we're going to do an interview style uh, video with the creator of the Giplins and we're going to learn a lot about the Giplins. Uh, hopefully we can make a short fun video here for you guys because I think they're very interesting. So with, uh, without further ado, let's jump into this and talk to the creator of the Giplins. So uh, can you tell us a little bit about what a Giplin is and that sort of thing? A Giplin is a glowing flying space They're basically uh, alien sheep. They are uh, depending on what era you are have is there's different types if you want me to go into that i guess that'll be later on but i, I really giblins are just little fluffy creatures originally they're meant to be small cute fluffy and harmless but then the story will complicate things okay so can you share like the important parts of the lore or like the backstory that sort of thing can you talk about the lore and the backstory mostly the important parts uh, the important parts of the lore is that you have the normal giblins then you have the deadland giblins which are three different types the hunting the fiend which are the elemental and then you have the demented which are giblins that were in their hunting form when they were exiled or banished or whatever from their herds and became mutated throughout the whole life that they lived there. Uh, and then you have the seraphims, which are like the uh, afterlife version. Also another thing is that we have the Gipleeps, which are the babies. You'll notice that all the Giplins have like no wool or whatever on their neck. That's because they have health problems if they don't take it off. Finally, uh, we get introduced into Era 2, which happens after a five-year war. Also, the planet that they're on is called Namnu, and we are introducing lore to that place. Okay, so uh, moving on to diet, what do Giplins eat? Like, what, what do they normally eat? What does their, like, diet consist of normally? Well, if you look in Era 1, they usually eat around grass and anything, because they were originally uh, not too far from the plains. They were, like in the like forest or whatever but not too far into it they were content with like eating grass or whatever but when they're in their hunting forms desiring meat or whatever they will uh eat meat but the thing is they didn't know about any other creatures so you can kind of say giplins are cannibalistic in era one and then you get to era two where they actually go deeper into the woods and everything and will actually find other creatures and find other like plants and stuff like that that they learn hey there's more to this than just the prairie and being eating others so era one is more seems harmless but really isn't era two is more hitting the harmless route okay so you mentioned like they live in fields and stuff like that or is there any other kind of environment that they normally live in or like what's like the most common place you see them like, what kind of living arrangements, so to speak, do they have? Well, for Giplins, they normally have the plains slash prairie, then the, like, not too far in depth of the forest, and then you have the deadlands, which is just literally, like, dead forest, dead trees, murky water, and stuff like that. That's where you'll find the fiends, which are the elementals. But sometimes you can also find certain elementals in, like, the forest, or the ocean slash rivers, but the Deadlands is just there in the Deadlands. Whereas the Seraphim, depending on, I forgot to mention this about the lore, Seraphims are dead Giplins. But depending on how you acted in the living and stuff like that, is how you are in where you go in the afterlife. If you were good and everything like that, you were put into uh, Alista, which is basically their equivalent of heaven. Well, your show is their equivalent of hell, where if you did some very horrible deeds in the living, that's where you got cast down to. But the cool part is, I forgot to also share in the lore, is the height difference. Gip leaps are three feet, 
Gip Lynn's normal are five feet. Hunting and Fiend's are 10 feet. The Demented is 15. And the Seraphim is 30 feet. Now, some people may think those are extremely tall. Not really, if you compare them to, like, the forest and everything like that, which is taller. Knowing where they live and stuff like that, what what like, what like kind of behaviors do they have? Like, what do they, like, normally do? Is there any kind of, like, thing that they may do on, an, on, on like, an average day or something like that? Like, what is their behavior, so to speak? Well, in Era 1, their behavior is to be in the giblets and stuff like that, how to harness their uh, hunting giblin form. You also have, like, the first, which is leader, the herds, you know, protecting and leading the herds in how to survive and stuff like that. You have the deadland, which are the most cruel creatures on Namnu compared to, like, the normal giblins and hunting forms. They basically are either misunderstood or set out for revenge you just don't know with the deadland whereas era 2 there is a whole lot more deadlands that are trying to defy uh what the deadland stood for they wanted to be equal to that of the normal giplin and so they decided to hey you know I want to be part of this I don't want to be known as this just because I'm different does not mean I'm like a horrible, horrible, you know, Giplin. I'm not bad. I'm not evil. I'm just different. Okay, so basically, like, the behavior changes depending on what kind of Giplin it is, which is which is interesting because, like, some of the other species that I've done haven't really necessarily been like that, that had other types. Usually they're like, oh, it's just, they all sort of do this. And with your species, it kind of seems, like, dependent on what what type of Giplin it is. But what, like, what made you think of the Giplins? Like, what did, what did you, like, what made you make them? How did you come up with it and that sort of thing? Like, what is, what is the process of, like, making this and where did it come from? Well, when it came to the Giplins, uh, I was originally the only one because of, I was so into SCP, uh, containment breach and stuff like that. And originally they were going to be for a, its own version called Alien Creature Research Facility where you play as a scientist and you uh, are sent there because of your higher up is like, yeah, no, I think there's a better place for you. And so you go there. You learn that there is alien creatures that were literally taken from their planet, only one E. And you learn about their different types. Now, I didn't get very far into creating it, but that's where the Giplins came in. You think that they're harmless, innocent creatures until you don't feed them or whatever, and then they start turning into hunting di- hunting you down and wanting to eat. That's the reason why that you don't feel safe. You could prevent it. And that's the reason why you have normal Giblin and hunting Giblin is because of the, this game idea. And so I fell in love with the species so much I decided to go into it further. And that's when uh, I had my friends Blue and Maladi. They were there from the beginning. So was my friend Lucifer. Um, that's just the name they go by. Uh, they just all were there for me. We also have Aqua, who is an admin. And uh, along the way, it just took a while for them to finally pick up. Though we're slowly growing. The Giplins, um, when I made them, I think was around either 2017? Yeah, 2017, 2018 is when they were introduced. Okay, that's kind of, that's kind of funny because, like, around 2016, 2017 was about when I joined Ponytown. So it's a very good chance that, like, you were probably the first species I ever, like, saw. I didn't know it was a species at the time because I was like pretty new to Ponytown at the time. But that's kind of interesting. I, I I really like that. I really like the 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 way that the species was kind of created. It was created outside of Ponytown and then more or less brought into Ponytown, like because you had it for this this game idea and everything like that, and put it into Ponytown, which is kind of cool because I've said this before in the species um, 
community and everything like that where like if there's a species in Ponytown it doesn't have to be in Ponytown it can be elsewhere it can exist elsewhere at the same time I don't know how many people know that or like how many people understand that and you seem to understand that pretty well because you started outside of Ponytown and brought it to Ponytown which is in my opinion how most species probably should start moving on um what is what is anything else that it's like anything else that you want to share before like we end the video before we end the call or anything like that like any kind of fun facts anything like that yeah um when uh i first introduced it to ponytown uh of course i said i was the only one but that also left me to be more creative and I realized when I was making some funny versions of Giplins, which I was making, you know, like KDA, a.k.a. Uh, Pop Stars music video when that came out, I decided to create that. I also created, like, a Sam. And the reason why, uh, there will be a few things I will kind of let slide for your Giplin, is only certain requirements or certain things that don't tend to work well with design, but... Uh, it, you know it's there um, is the hoodie in Ponytown you know how it just covers neck items completely and it's just very disappointing yeah I don't I don't like how it like covers things up because there's it, there's like um, other clothes items too that would just cover up a cutie mark or some some of the wings would just cover up a cutie mark so sometimes it's hard to even use a cutie mark in some cases and um, the same thing happens with the neck or some other items. Like you can just cover up some some uh, certain things with other things, and it, it can be annoying to work around for species creation or just OC creation in general. Yeah, um, we allow the hoodie, and you don't have to show exactly the neck when you're using the hoodie. But we know that if you follow the other requirements, such as the horns fit for certain Kiplin. Uh, species subspecies or species in general uh the glowing uh outline which is very important because that's also part of lore which i forgot to mention the reason why they glow is their neon teal blood doesn't matter what color of giblin you are or whatever even if your glow is different your blood is always neon teal so that's one thing you have to follow that you have to uh have wings Except for the Giblets, which don't have their wings grown in. And then you have, also forgot this, but the Seraphim's lore. Depending on your status on the living, if you are a Giblet that died at a young age, you get your adult wings. Just two of them. If you were an adult that died, okay, here's where it gets tricky. Because if you're an adult with, like, no status, like, special status in the living, you only had four wings when you died. If you had special status, like leader of the herd or in like the royal herd family or whatever, you get swings. And that's the max you get. Which, the reason why we do that is because if people wanted to like take their uh, Giplin and like have it out on like uh, art platforms like DVNR, Toy House, stuff like that, um, you can. Because then you can actually draw out your Giplin which makes it more fun and interesting. And uh, the more I think about it, the more we introduce the rare traits, even more rare traits will happen to appear later on in Era 2, to where more people can have more creativity and open to create. And that's what I hope with my species. And I hope that after we release the first thing of the comic, funny enough, going to introduce some special characters. Later, we'll introduce very important plot story and everything like that. It's just story lore based with creativity there for the species. And that's what I'm trying to go for, for the Giplins. It's just to be like, hey, you could be creative, semi-open. Sure, there's a little restriction, but all in all, you can be creative with it. I noticed that a lot of the Ponytown species is not really open and creative enough that does sound mean to me but there's a lot of restrictions and i understand that if they have to meet what it looks like but it still feels kind of confining yeah i know i know what you mean yeah i don't know i don't have any other questions so like i said the last question i'll just ask it again is there any one last thing you want to say before i do in the call because uh, it sounds like we got 
through pretty much everything else, unless there is something I forgot to mention or something you forgot to mention. I would like to know what your take on the species is. Your thoughts. I would like to hear them. <laughs> okay, well, my thing about the species, they look really good in the art, but in Ponytone you can definitely see where the limitations are. And that's the same case as a lot of the species is where you, they look so good, they look so great, there's so much lore, there's so much backstory, but as soon as it gets into Ponytown, you start to see the limitations that Ponytown has. And this falls more into Ponytown's fault than it does anyone's fault. Like, I think you did the best with it. I think it looks, I think the Giplins look like what they should in Ponytown, but ultimately, because of the limitations, they will never look as good as, like, some of the art that I've seen and stuff like that. And I, I just I just think overall the species is a good species. It's I just I really love it because it seems like you've put more thought and more uh, attention into the lore and the species overall than anyone else that I've talked to or looked at so far because I mean you said it yourself you started in like 2017 the last like all the other species were created either at the end of last year or somewhere mid last year and a lot of the other species are new. Yours is like really old. It's one of the first that were in Ponytown. I mean Sorry to interrupt, but I actually created the Giplins. Here's what you did know, though, is that the first few species that were introduced through Ponytown were the popular Buggles, and then there was also what we call the Lisp. The Flies, there, were, there was different species, which made me want to create my own, and that is why I slowly started to do that. Sure, it was originally for the game, but I have to give credit where credit is due, which is the Buggles. If it wasn't for them and encouraging me, saying, hey, it's okay, your species may be different now, who knows later on down the road. They are the reason why the Giplins are slowly striving right now, is because I'm determined to show, yeah, I'm creative enough to have a living uh, species community. And I, I think that's that's really cool too. And I noticed from being in your server that it's a pretty small server, and that's honestly shocking to me because of like the lore and everything like that. But at the same time, I kind of I kind of understand it because the the Giplins, because of what they look like in Ponytown, it doesn't necessarily have any kind of like huge like oh my gosh this is this is really pretty this is really different this looks so unique and everything like that which. The Giplins are a very sheep-like species and everything like that. They look pony than some of the other species, like the Toxabugs and uh, the Care Robos. If it's a robot species, it's immediately recognizable that, hey, that's a robot, because it's very easy to do a robot in Ponytown. So with, with the Giplins, I think the problem is people don't really notice the species until it's too late, until, like, oh, that was a species, and when they... I think what people want in a species is like something that looks very, very different from everything. You said you said you were the first to do like the, the outline thing. That would have that should have yes. brought, that should have brought more attention to you. But because everyone else started doing it after, everyone else kind of just overcrowded that. They like covered they like covered you up basically. I, I just I just think there should be more attention to towards your species, especially since you seem to be the most determined to make something out of it. All the other species are just like, oh, we're just like a fun little community or whatever like that. And you're a fun community too, but everyone else has like their, just a fun community. That's it. They don't have a whole lot of like, oh, we're going to make an entire story out of this. We have a comic plan and everything like that. And you have a comic plan and everything. You clearly have a very interesting story you want to tell. Uh, it seems like like the past year or whatever, you've been focusing more on the lore and backstory before you start the story. And I think that's I think that's genius. I think that's the perfect way to do it is to build up all the material and then from there you can just make whatever kind of story you want from it. And I, I just I just think you've I think you've done the best with the species so far. You may not have like the best looking species I mean, so far that I've seen in Ponytown, but it definitely has the most depth to it. And that's what I love about it. That's kind of, that's what like ultimately made me want to do the interview of it is because I kind of wanted to to just talk about it. Like this is like a like a very different kind of species. Yeah, um, also, I mean, I cannot take all the credit for the the lore development of the Giplin. I mean, to this point, I have, let's see, we have artist platform leaders, we have a lore team, we have my co-owners, which were originally Blue and Maladai, who were originally admins, but now promoted co-leaders because they've been there from the beginning. We have my admins. 
we have the comic team. We just have a bunch of talented artists in the species. We just have <laughs> so much going for it, and that's why I thought, hey, since we have amazing artists, why not just start having a team of artists for, like, platforms to get it more out there and not just be, like, PT only, you know, because sometimes those species will die out if you cannot expand, and I don't want this for my species. I don't want it for the Gitlins. I want them to strive to survive. Yes, it's this semi-open species, but I want it to be, you know, recognizable. I want people to be invested in the lore, in the story, in the characters that you get to delve into, the important characters that my friends and I, co-owners and admins, work on so hard for, you know? Because I have a love and attachment to the species, I don't want it to see it die and just be like, oh, that was just that PT species, right? No, I love PT species. I love where I started. But sometimes I'm afraid that it's just going to die out like a little flame, a small flame that didn't get a chance to become a bonfire. I mean, I completely understand that. And like I said, just that to me just kind of I just I just love to see when people get really passionate about something that they created or something that they're working on. And you seem to be the most passionate out of all the other creators I've talked to about their species and everything like that. And from what I've seen from the other species, they do seem to be very confined to Ponytown. And that's, like I said earlier, it sucks to like keep it in one place. You don't want to keep a species in one place. You want to expand it. I think you were in the perfect position to just be like, hey, you know, um, I have everything I need to just expand outward, so let me expand outward. And you were in the perfect position to be able to, like, set up a comic because you had the artist, you had, you know, people that were willing to work on the project and everything like that. And I just think it's so wonderful. <laughs> um, I do think there should be more attention to your, towards your species and everything like that. Also, we have an official amino and Instagram from both my artists. One named Karma, which is the leader of the Instagram, and then we have my friend Alistair, that's what we call them. They are the ones who created the Amino. They're also helping for the comic. These two work so hard, and my admin who's been gone a while, Aqua, has now come back and is also helping. So, yeah, all I have to say about the Giplins. Well, um, I think we're gonna I think we're gonna end everything there then.